Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video we are going through how you can get the most overpowered weapons early in the game. We will be covering both melee and ranged, then we will also go through for magic. So starting this one off, if we go to the first step, which is where you first enter Limgrave, and whilst we are loading in, if you are not currently sub to the channel, then make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's continue. So as soon as you come to the first step, you are going to head west. And we are going to find a path down onto the beach. So continue coming around this way. Then what we are going to do is, on this path, ignore this big dude. Yeah, he's going to get angry, but he's too big. He can't chase you. So when you get down here, if you turn around and you start heading south, then as soon as you get to this massive, like, archway, sitting down here, this one's not really overpowered, but there's going to be a merchant sitting there. And as long as you have 600 runes, you can purchase yourself a bow. So if you're not starting with the samurai class, this is going to be incredibly helpful. If you want to use a bow for some very early ranged gameplay, you can also purchase some arrows. You can grab yourself a shield if you want to, and there's also a broadsword. So there's a little mixture of weapons here. Then returning to the first step, we are going to head east all the way over to Dragon Burnt Ruins. For this one, it's not necessary. There is another weapon that we will cover. But if you want this one, you will need your mount. In order to get your mount, what you have to do is, from the first step, go to the Church of Ella, which is just north. Then north again from there, up the main road. Then you are going to come to Gatefront. And once you interact with the checkpoint there, the Sight of Grace, Melina is going to spawn in with a cutscene and you will get your mount. So at this wall here, I'll show you the exact location. It's on the very south side of the Dragonburnt Ruins. What you're going to do is jump up and over this wall. Then make your way down here. And inside this chest, you are going to get the Twin Blade. So this is what the Twin Blade will look like. It's got your like standard sort of attacks. It's just a really cool looking weapon. But then if you hold down your Y button if you're on Xbox and you press your right bumper to two-hand it, you attack a lot faster and it's got a really, really cool moveset. Going back to the first step, if we head north up to the Church of Ella, go all the way past and come to Gatefront, when you arrive here, what you're going to do is kill these enemies to get your hands on the brass shield. It's going to be a very good addition to your arsenal of weaponry. This guy will not drop it, but there are four enemies that we are going to farm. And they are all holding the brass shield. So the ones that hold the brass shield have the ability to drop it as a loot item. So you've got that guy there, and then you've got the one that's sitting over at the campfire. This shield is going to take the longest to obtain out of all of them. Make your way up here. Sneak up on this guy. And even though my uh, takedown didn't work, I still managed to kill him. Then this guy comes over. I kill him. I got some bolts. But those four enemies can drop the shield. The thing is, it's going to take the longest to obtain because you have to farm them. Typically, you can get it between, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of farming, maybe even sooner. But it all depends on your RNG. And I've seen some comments on the channel where people saying they've spent at least like an hour and they still haven't got it. But that's the most efficient route. Guy at the caravan that can't drop it. Guy in the path, sitting down at the campfire, running back round on yourself and taking those two out. The one that you would backstab if it worked for me. And then the one that attacks you from there. Then from Gatefront, if you head west, you make your way up to Stormhill Shack. Then come all the way along this northeast road until you get to Saints Bridge. When you are at Saints Bridge, if you turn around and head west up the path... This one's going to be completely useless to the samurai, but it's an incredible weapon to start with for any other class looking to build into melee. So make your way up here, keep following this round, and you are going to see a door. You open this door, make your way down here, 
Then if you touch Grace, you'll get the checkpoint. From this checkpoint, you're going to ignore all the enemies and everything in here. Make your way down this corridor, turn to the left, come down these stairs. This is where the skeletons start spawning. So make your way down these stairs along and through this door here. Keep going all the way to the very end. Then you're going to turn left again. And just in here, on this corpse, you are going to get the Uchi Katana. Then all you've got to do is backtrack on yourself to make it out of... I was going to say providing they don't attack me, but I managed to get past. So just backtrack on yourself to get out of the catacombs. So with the Uchi Katana, it's going to be a starting weapon for the Samurai. But this has a really cool skill. So if I pop my shield away... If I hold my left trigger, you're going to see that he sheaths the weapon. So if I get this guy's... Uh, I don't even need to get his attention. But if I go close to him, and then I use the skills of holding left trigger, and I attack, it's a very, very quick move. You can do jumping attacks, you can do heavy attacks and light. If I lock onto this guy, and then when I get close to him, if I do a heavy attack, it's an overhead... And then this guy as well, he's going to start. It's just a far too quick for enemies to deal with. It's incredible for when you start this game. So you do have the option to use the Twin Blade. You can also use the Uchi Katana. The thing with the Brass Shield is, if we take a look at it, the Guarded Damage Negation is 100 for physical. So this is going to stop you taking like anywhere near as much damage as you usually would with any other shield. It's absolutely incredible, especially for the early game. Then switching over to our Astrologer, this is going to be the magic side of it. We've already covered the melee, you can get a bow, we've got shields and everything like that. As I said, this is all for early game, you're going to get much better stuff as you make progress. But what we're going to look at in terms of the magic is a staff. One of the best spells to use early game, then also a sword that scales with intelligence, which is really, really good for any magic build. So starting off, as always, from the first step, you are going to head to Dragonburnt Ruins, similar to the Twin Blade, except we're going for a different chest. So on my mount, head east. You'll see the ruins straight away as soon as you get to this cliff edge. So what you're going to do when you get to the ruins is go through this little wall section here and it's where the big tower is. So I'm going to jump over and you're going to see a staircase. Come down under here, you're going to have a room full of rats. Make sure you kill the rats because this door won't open until you have killed them. I mean, you can open it, but you might as well just get rid of the enemies first. Then obviously, when you do this, all the rats will be dead because you have to open the door. But the chest is going to be a trap. It's going to teleport you to a different location. So when you do get to this location, it's Celia Crystal Tunnel. If we have a look, it's all the way over here on the map. So it's on the right-hand side of the map. What we're going to do is come out of here and turn right. Ignore all the enemies. Just run down the hill. Be careful because there will be a sniper as you go through this bit here. If you haven't aggroed the enemies, you won't get fired at, but if you have, then that's going to happen. And you could actually die, so be careful. But at the very bottom, you do have a Sight of Grace. Then from the Sight of Grace, you're going to head south out of the tunnel itself. And we're going to jump on our mount. Then we're going to head southwest and just keep going in this direction. Then when it starts opening up, you're going to stop following like the wall and hugging it. You're going to drop down here and come over towards this ruins. As you get over here, you're going to see this structure right here. So it's on the far west side. When you enter, there's going to be stairs leading down. There will be enemies. Some of them might try attacking you. But as you get to the bottom, open the door. There's going to be a chest. And you are going to get the Rock Sling spell. It's absolutely amazing for dealing heavy damage against a single enemy. If you use your spirits to like, basically take the aggro, you can use Rock Sling efficiently. You're going to deal big damage in a very short amount of time. But from this little dungeon sort of thing, whatever you want to call it, 
if we head back to the surface and try not to get killed in the process, we are going to come out of the south side, jump on our mount and just come down here, down to this section right here. Then off your mount you get, come along this wall and right here you're going to get the meteorite staff. So when we get back to the first step, I'm going to take out this tree sentinel. Just so I can show you what the meteorite staff is like. If we quickly take a look at its stats. Yeah, if you look at attribute scaling, it's got S tier intelligence scaling. So with this tree sentinel, I'm going to lock on. And I'm going to use rock sling, but I'm also going to summon my wolves. Then once your wolves have the aggro, rock sling... Look at his health bar at the bottom. Then one more rock sling. And the tree sentinel is dead. It's that easy. So now on to the final weapon. We are going to head very far away from here. If you look on your map, you have the first step. That's where you start. You make your way up to gate front. You come over to Stormhill Shack. From Stormhill Shack, head up the main path to the north. And instead of following it all the way around into the castle, you're going to head right onto this dirt path. Follow it all the way to the very end of the bridge that's at the end of this dirt path. When you do make it to the very end of the bridge, there's going to be a Warrior's Cookbook level 7 with that corpse. But what you want to do is head all the way up that path to the left. And inside that like rock formation, there's a passage. Follow that until you get to Lake Facing Cliffs. Then from Lake Facing Cliffs, you're going to follow the main road around to the left-hand side. Come all the way down to the lake. Then travel all the way up the lake until you get to Northern Leonia Lake Shore. So from Northern Leonia Lake Shore, as you come into this like ruins... There is going to be a site of grace called Road to the Manor. However, there is this big wall here, like a big archway. And this looks like a brick wall, like you can't get past it. If you just attack the wall, it opens up. It is like a secret wall sort of thing. Grab this site of grace, then make your way up to the manor. As soon as you get into the manor, just keep going around, following the main path. Until you get to the lower level, then work your way. Like the lower level will be here. You're going to have these walkways go straight across, up, and into the upper level. Then when you do get to the manor and the upper level, what you want to do is drop off this edge here, sprint all the way along, and when you come all the way up here, there is going to be a big dude sat at the top of the stairs. There are going to be three enemies standing on the stairs. If you use Rock Sling, other spells and stuff that you've accumulated over the time of playing, then what I do is come in here with a Rock Sling on the first one, then a Glintstone Pebble to finish it off, then the same with the second one, and then the same with number three. And with these enemies, the problem is you're going to have to farm, similar to how you have to with the Brass Shield. Sometimes you won't aggro the big dude, so you can just fast travel back to the upper level. Sometimes you will aggro him and just have to run back. But there's no fighting on the way up. You don't have to initiate like any combat or anything like that. It's just about the travel to get to the top. But once you are there, farm those enemies and just caution. It took me an hour and 45 minutes to get this weapon to drop. The RNG can be brutal at the best of times. But taking a look at this weapon... This is the Lazuli Glintstone Sword. And this weapon is amazing for a magic build because it's got low attribute requirements, 8 strength, 9 dexterity, 13 intelligence. But this also scales with intelligence. So it's a low attribute requirement sword for a mage or another build like that that actually scales with intelligence. It's an absolutely fantastic sword to have by your side. Then if you combo the Glintstone Sword and your Meteorite Staff with some really good spells, you're off to an amazing start in Elden Ring. So that was a look at some of the most overpowered weapons you can get in Elden Ring very early on. That is also going to wrap up the video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.